to my channel. Today I'm doing another installment in my 100 years of makeup for pale skin video. Today is the 1930s. This is actually a refilm because the first time I filmed this the entire video was out of focus. I don't know how my eyes didn't see it very well in the viewfinder but I managed to go the entire time without realizing it was like really really out of focus. Like I tried to sort of think maybe you guys won't notice but it was just not up to my standard so I thought I'd refilm it. Now just like my 1920s tutorial this is very much a historically informed makeup tutorial not necessarily historically accurate. The research I've done is all off the internet and particularly a web website called Glamour Days was really really helpful in um, helping me find sort of inspiration for it. Um, I really did try and look at old vintage pictures rather than like modern recreations so at least the ideas I was taking were from an authentic source. Some of the trends in makeup were very matte sort of pale skin, really really over plucked brows, the eyes were really softly defined often in colours of sort of like soft greys and blacks, the winged liner look wasn't really big yet at all, um, they tended to just define with shadow um, but lashes were very prominent and of course the bright red lip came into popularity. However, compared to the previous decade, the lips started to get a little bit softer, the cupid's bow wasn't as defined. So that's just a little bit of background info on how I came to create this look for you. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. So in the 1930s, they had very matte skin, just like the 1920s. Um, so I'm going to go in with a pore minimizing sort of mattifying primer, the Benefit Porefessionals, my favorite one. And I'm just going to apply this to the parts of my face that tend to get a little bit more oily. Then I'm going to go in with a foundation. I'm obviously picking something that's a little bit more on the matte side. I've picked the Lancome Tint Adol Ultra 24 Hour Foundation in 090 Ivory. Now if you're in Australia, someone actually just told me the other day, one of my subscribers, that you can buy this from Nordstrom and they ship to Australia. The shipping is very expensive, so you pay a lot more for the product than you should have have to but if you're desperate to get the shade you can always buy it from there and then I'm just gonna blend that in with my beauty blender then I'm just gonna go in with a bit of concealer I'm just using my Tarte Shape Tape in Fair Neutral just have a few extra little spots that need a bit of extra coverage and I'm also applying that under my eyes as well just using my beauty blender to blend everything out then I'm just going to set my base and mattify the skin a little using my Models Prefer Mineral Veil. This is a fantastic powder if you don't want to look flat, but you still want to mattify and obviously set the foundation. And I'm just using my big fluffy Eco Tools, what is this called, full powder brush. And I'm just kind of pressing it into the skin so that I don't disturb or move the product underneath. And mainly focusing it on my T-zone. Now for cheek colour, like the 1920s, they didn't bronze or use like contouring as, as in a traditional sense um, but what I noticed in my research is that a lot of the pictures had a very sort of peachy flush on the cheeks so I'm gonna go in with a peachy blush just to kind of emulate what I saw online I'm just gonna take the Benefit Coralista blush from the Checkathon palette and my Surat Beauty blush brush and I'm just gonna build this up I'm gonna apply quite a decent amount because this is because this is the only real sort of color that I'm adding to my face more vintage blush tended to be placed a little bit lower than we traditionally do it now um, and sort of acted like a contour. For me highlighter is something that I just never skimp on, um, even on very sort of no makeup makeup days. I'm going to use the Makeup Geek highlighter in Lit and I'm just going to add a very small tasteful amount just to bring a little bit of life to my face. The lovely thing about this colour for me is that it almost sort of matches my skin tone but just adds a glow so it does look very natural and very believable on the skin even though it's quite foiled. Now brows in the 1930s were obviously very thin and very over plucked. Um, for the purposes of this video I'm certainly not going to over pluck my brows. I think a couple of people were a little confused in this series. It's certainly not trying to be like historically accurate. These tutorials are meant to be inspired by the periods, so you take inspiration but then apply them in a modern context. So yes, I'm not going to have the most thin brows in the world, but I'm going to try and fill my brows very thin, for me, as thin as possible. I'm starting out with my Benefit, precisely my brow pencil, which has a very very fine point, and this is in the shade 2, which is quite fair. Then I'm going in with my Benefit Cabral pomade in the shade 2 as well. For some reason comes off a little bit darker than the pencil but I quite like that because it means that the inner part of my brow is very um, light and then the outer part is a little bit darker. 
So that's probably as thin as I can possibly fill them in. And I did kind of add a decent arch to it as well because they had very arched brows. Then I'm just going to add a little bit of brow gel as well. I'm using my Benefit Gimme Brow. This is in the shade 3. Now for eyes, they basically used very soft sort of greys and cooler toned shades generally on their eyes, like long voluminous fluttery lashes um, with a little bit of subtle defining in the crease and on that lash line. They weren't really into like liquid liner yet, so I'm going to do all my sort of defining work using eyeshadows. I'm going to take the Tarte Tartlet palette, which has a lovely selection of sort of cooler toned um, neutral eyeshadows at the top here. So I'm going in with a matte cream shade first. This one is Super Mum. And with a fluffy brush, I'm just going to put that all over the lid. Then I'm going to take the color Power Player, which is a lovely cool toned sort of taupe shade. And a sort of defined crease brush. And I'm just going to start defining my crease with this. What I love about this brush, this is a Haku Hodo brush. It has such a lovely defined point, so it really does sort of chisel out the crease. But it's also super fluffy, so it blends as you go. Like, it's so easy to use. Then I'm going to take this double-ended brush from Eco Tools and I'm going to take the defining side and I'm just going to take a little bit, a little bit of that power player colour and just define the lower lash line a little bit. And then I'm going to take this sort of, it's not really a black, it's more like a deep charcoal shade fashionista and that same brush and just start to define the upper lash line, kind of like where you would put eyeliner but we're not actually going to use any eyeliner. It's just all shadow. So you can see how much of a difference just adding that tiny bit of shadow to the top lash line made. I'm going to take another double ended brush from Echo Tools. So I'm going to use this blend side which is a very small precise blending brush and just apply a little bit more of that power play colour to this outer part of the crease, just a little bit more sort of direct placement. And then to finish off the eyes, I'm going to add some mascara. I'm using my Benefit Roller Lash, and I'm also going to add some little like half um, falsies just to the outer part of the eye, just to give a little bit more volume, but it won't look like we're wearing false lashes. So I'm going to apply different mascara on my lower lashes just because I like to use a waterproof formula. I'm just grabbing the Maybelline Falsies Push Up Drama in the waterproof formula. I don't actually like this mascara, but I only use it on my lower lashes. And the trick to getting a very natural looking lash on the bottom is to just apply a very small amount. And then get your finger and just kind of like dab your lashes. In the 1930s is where we really started to see that like classic red lip sort of come through um, and they tended to use more sort of creamy formulas and really matte lipsticks weren't sort of around then. So I'm going to use a red lipstick in a traditional sort of bullet form. This one is by Smashbox. This is the colour Bing and this one is a matte formula but it doesn't come across very matte on the lips at all. It has shea butter in it so it really moisturises your lips and makes them look nice and sort of plump. The other thing is they didn't define their cupid's bow quite as much as the 1920s. So that's it for my tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. If you do want to see my 1920s makeup tutorial, you can click up here. And if you want to subscribe for more pale skin videos, then you can click on my face down here. So until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.